Today we're going to be making some modifications to my Harrow and Catrille is home for the holiday season. We're going to be talking about what she's been doing, what she's going to be doing. Hey dad, do you know why they call it a Harrow? No. Because if you're underneath it, that would be a harrowing experience. It would be a real drag. Let's get started. We've got the harrow fully raised now, but this is on Johnny too, Catrille. Mm. See how much slack there is in the... It looks like it'd be a nice hammock. I'm about to take a nap right there. <laughs> I'm not really sure that it would be that comfortable. And since I've had mine out in the rocks, it probably wouldn't be that clean. We'd have to mm. put a blanket on there or something for you maybe. But um, So with, with a larger tractor that'll lift real tall like this, this is fine. But when we first got this, uh, the first thing I noticed was, hey, uh, Johnny, a subcompact tractor or a, a deer or a, a BX Kubota uh, will not lift high enough to get this off the ground. Mm. So I requested a design change to allow us to be able to get this off the ground. Within a week, they sent it to me. So the engineering department and the fulfillment department were actually on top of it. They were, un unlike, the, uh, unlike your company when you were in third grade, catapulting supplies that never delivered hey, on my catapult. Hey, catapulting supplies finally delivered on Christmas. I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I believe it or not. When Katria was in the third grade, she sent me an email, I said my- I was second grader. Second grade? <laughs> she sent me an email, probably her first email ever, that said my catapulting supplies order was going to be delayed. And she said that my extra large catapult request, which was one that would catapult me over the house, uh, was not going to be fulfilled at all and was going to be replaced with a smaller one. I was incredibly disappointed, but to this day I've yet to receive even the mid-sized catapult that was promised. But this engineering department came through within a week and you know there, there is still a, a bad part for me, Catrille. That was at least six weeks ago, and I've not got this design change put on the Harrow yet. What have you been doing, Dad? Just eating cheeseburgers and... Yeah, something like that. So, how about let's do that today? All right. So, Dad, what's the, um, what's the point of this Harrow? <laughs> well, there's lots of points on this particular Harrow. <laughs> but anyway, it, it actually can be used uh, in a lot of drag-type situations. So... Uh, it's all white because I've been using it on the driveway. Um, in this case, uh, this type of a, a harrow has several different ways it can be pulled. Uh, I've got it setting now so that when it's pulled forward, these teeth uh, can only go back so far. So they end up sticking down like you see here, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the most aggressive setting. So when I'm running that over my rock, um, as long as the rock's a little bit wet or loose, I mean, it'll really, it'll really tear. If it's a little bit wet, like I'm mentioning, it'll actually get down and, and, you know, scratch up some of the harder surface. And in that more aggressive state, if it's still not aggressive enough, you can actually put something on it, like something of weight, like a, an old tire or a six by six or blocks or something you can just put out there on the harrow. And it'll push down really hard and and, and do a good job. Now, with this particular one, we can turn it around. So we can take these, there, at, at each corner, there's these chain links, see the, the, the chain links here? Mm -hmm. We can take those chain links loose, and that will allow the harrow to be separated from this upper frame. We take the tractor and frame and mount onto the other end. Okay. Right? And then when we pull up, these teeth will go the other way, and that allows them to go almost flat to where they're only sticking down about that far. So that's kind of a, a middle of the road as far as how aggressive it is, right? Mm -hmm. For the least aggressive approach, again, we take the whole harrow off and we flip it all over and those teeth are sticking up. So then all you have is this surface right here so, rubbing against the ground. So for what scenario might you want to use each of those configurations? Well. There's so many scenarios you can use a harrow. Um, it, first of all, it's, it's, it's just because it's a multi-purpose tool, right? Um, but the, the most aggressive uh, would be on a driveway, maybe where you've got rock. 
Maybe another scenario is where you're trying to uh, get trash moved off of an area, right? So what I mean by trash is like leaves or corn debris. stalks, debris, and, and, you can, and you can drag them off and sort of use it as a rake. Um, if you've got loose dirt, you can use this to, to level that dirt a little bit and smooth it out. Now, let's go to the far other extreme, the least aggressive, where we turn the, the harrow over and pull at least aggressive. One good use for that, let's say you don't have one of those expensive cedars, right? On this channel, you've seen us show cedars that are $7,000 or more, and they, they work really well. But let's say you don't have one of those and all you have is a catrille. You can take a catrille and make her spread the seed out by hand, throw it out there by hand, and then you turn this harrow over and you can, you can just drag over it really lightly and that will give the seed to soil contact that you need. Because the seed doesn't need to be buried really very deep. It just needs to have a little bit of soil on it to, to get going. And does that still qualify as being planted with love? I think it would be, don't you? Okay, yeah. I think. <laughs> now there's one last thing with this harrow that's interesting to discuss, and that is that when we remove the harrow from the frame, we can actually pull it with a UTV, like our Gator or a Polaris Ranger, um, a small garden tractor. It, it requires almost no power to pull the harrow. So it's, that, that's a, a wonderful option that you have with this thing. The, the, the number of options as far as configuration uh, just, just keep on going. If you'll notice here, there are two halves to this harrow, really two separate pieces that are basically two and a half feet long. And there's these round hooks in the middle here. You can take the back half and turn it over or turn it backwards, right, so that you can have aggressive on the front and less aggressive on the rear or not aggressive at all on the rear. It's kind of um, like a mullet. Business in the front, party in the back. Oh, yeah, I guess so. I never really thought of this as a mullet, but whatever, guys, I don't know. About storage, now this thing looks really big. It's uh, at least five feet long, maybe even longer, but these beams are bolted together, right? So if you have very limited storage space, you can quickly take off these two U-bolts on each side, take off these cross beams, the harrow itself will roll up, probably about this big around. And then those cross beams, you know, you could set them, stack them such that they're not a very big area at all. And it wouldn't take but just a few minutes to put it back together again uh, when you were ready to get it out next time you used it. So the flexibility here is amazing. But I think we should get started with this design improvement. All right, I'm waiting to be blown away by your engineering skills. I would like to say it's my engineering skills, but it's not. I just had the design request. In other words, I said, hey, the harrow's got slack in it. And you told somebody else it was their problem. I did. I was the owner of the company, and he says, oh, I can fix that. I'll send you something next week. Huh. So this is what he sent me. All right. And to my knowledge, it's on every new harrow shipped. You can get these harrows at agfolks.com. Here, hold that up there. You can use code TTWT for a 5% discount. I think this one's the five and a half feet wide issue, five foot, six inch. Um, they have them, this may be the narrowest one, I'm not sure. They have wider ones, but for my size tractor, this is really all I wanted. We could pull a lot wider one, Catrille. There's no problem with pulling a, a much larger one, but I didn't want a larger one because of being able to navigate well, and I feel like our driveway is like this size. No, it's two of these. Yeah, it would be two or three widths of this, but hey. One day I came home and there was, uh, there was like lines in the driveway. Was that this thing? Yeah, it was. It was. We would show you today, but there's a little bit of snow on our driveway. Not enough snow for us to have some snow fun outside, but a little bit of snow. And this doesn't work very well when things are frozen. So. I want to show you this. I'll show it in, in another episode, working on our driveway when it's, when it's in a more suitable condition for it. And, uh, you know, maybe we can show the different, the results of the different angles. But you're right, it, it, it kind of left grooves in the, in the driveway. And I imagine you were running it like this. I was, running it just like this, yeah, because I wanted to be the most aggressive. Of course you did. <laughs> now, I'm going to set this kind of as far forward as it would let me here. It's 
sounds like a NASCAR pit crew. Yeah. I was about as fast as they are, don't you think? I, you're always just about as fast as they are. <laughs> That's a joke. The heavy hitch John Deere was really tight today. It pushed me a little bit through the corners, but uh, overall we had a great day. And Just really proud of the team. Yeah. All came together. Really like to thank Artillion and, and Edge Tamers and uh, Rhino Ag for, for making this possible. They've just been they've just been great to us. And for Catrille for the quality entertainment. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna make it in NASCAR. I don't think so either. I think it's time we find a backup career. Get it a backup career because they don't back up in NASCAR. <laughs> the simplicity of design on this Harrow is, is great. And this, this improvement here is also just as simple as the rest of the Harrow. It does bring up with it two extra chain links that need to be unhooked when we turn it around. But I think it'll be worth it. Okay, here's what it looks like when we're at the same height would be the max height of a 1025R. I just measured 25 inches off the ground at the pin, which is how high the 1025R will lift. And it's got the harrow totally lifted off the ground. So this solution worked. Very simple, effective. Yeah. All good. Now, in the middle, it's still fairly close to the ground. But it doesn't matter if it's fairly close to the ground, it just can't be dragging the ground. Right, right. And even if it does drag a little bit, it's not going to hurt anything. You know, but, uh, so, so this works pretty well. Yeah. Why don't we actually show the viewers what it looks like when we take it off and put it on the other way? I don't know if there's enough space in here for that, Dad. You're right, Catrill. I don't think there was room to, to take it off inside here and, well, we'll just do this in a later video where we actually show it in action and show all these configurations. But what I can show here, what I did was I put it down and I went backwards. And so what I can show here is the, the teeth in their less aggressive position, right? See, they're turned down and they're only, now they point down just about an inch, something like that. Um, and the only ones that you see sticking up are where our new design change is. But that's because we're going backwards. Mm -hmm. If we had the whole thing turned around, it wouldn't, right. it wouldn't be doing that. Um, so this is position number medium. Number medium. Yeah. All right. There's number aggressive, number medium, and number passive. Okay. Did you learn your numbers that way? No. Hey, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you've been doing? I've been talking harrows this whole time. Well, I, what have I been doing? Well, when was the last time I was uh, on a Tractor Time with Tim video, Dad? This is crazy, but I think it's been a year. A whole year. I'm not sure. There may have been one this summer, but I don't think so. I think for the most part, you were busy all summer and yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, let's see. Since last year, I graduated from Purdue mm -hmm. and I, Moved to Italy and started grad school. Okay. And then I flew back home for Christmas mm -hmm. just to see you. We weren't really sure you were going to get to go to Italy. You know, I mean, Italy had all those coronavirus cases in the spring, and we, we didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah, but uh, it actually turned out that it was easier to go to Italy than stay in the U.S. So your classes were open in Italy? Yes. So I got to go to school in person. Okay. And the other half of your school, which was meeting in Washington, D.C., didn't no, have in-person. No, it was all closed, all virtual. Okay. So you're going to spend, I, I assume you're going back to Italy. I am. I'll be going back at the end of January, and then I'll be there for the rest of the school year until the end of May. Okay. Then what? Good question. I don't know what I'm doing for the summer yet. Um, probably interning somewhere. Who knows? Okay, but you've got one more year after that. Essentially from now, you've got a year and a half in this program. Right, and then the next year, um, 
assuming that the DC campus can reopen, I will be there for an academic year. Okay, so you're doing one academic year in Italy, the second academic year in Washington, DC. Right. Through Johns Hopkins. Yes, Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. Gotta rep the brand. That it, it sounds pretty, you know, amazing and all. <laughs> yeah, you need to get choked up about that. Cats. Why? What, what's your ultimate goal here? Uh, get as far away from you as possible. Italy's pretty good. You tried China? Yeah, I tried China. I only stayed there for two months, but this time I've got a whole year, so we're doing better. We're improving. Um, no, I wanted to do this program um, because it's both an academic program, but also kind of sets you up to work in like a professional setting, more so than most other grad school programs. So I study international development and economics and mostly focus on um, things like development finance, agricultural development, um, stuff like that. Um, and then hopefully, one day I'll be able to work on building infrastructure in the developing world that'll help rural farmers be able to sell their product in a market or um, help a country be able to produce more agriculturally or something like that. So you're trying to learn what really works to help a country develop? Yeah, from both a theory aspect and a okay, great, what do you do practically aspect. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of the things that we've tried, both through government and through private organizations, just doesn't work very well. Right, right. So the idea is then that you go to school, you learn the, the theories, and then you also kind of meet the people that have, have worked in the field. One of my professors um, was a country director for the World Bank. Um, there's a lot of, you know, networking and just and experiences talking to people that I think are really important, especially in this field where a lot of it is such complicated things that you kind of need to hear wisdom from people that have come before you. So what class are you taking next semester that you would think is going to be the most interesting to you? <sighs> the most interesting? Um, I don't know. I can't really choose. Uh, I have to take corporate finance, which I'm not super excited about. But the other three, I'm, I'm more looking forward to. Um, corporate finance. So that would be so that you could manage the books of a high-rolling corporate company like Tractor Time with Tim. Dad, let's go back to the point where I said that I was going to school to get as far away oh. from you as possible. <laughs> So corporate finance and three other things. What are these other three things? Um, public sector economics, like how do taxes and public investments work? And then economies of Central Asia and economic development of Latin America. So I'm, I've done a lot of theory in the past, a lot of uh, development economics and rural development, agricultural development, but um, I kind of need to start learning about actual countries and how these things function in a certain cultural and political context. So I speak Spanish, so that's why I wanted to choose the Latin America co course. Um, and then the professor for the Central Asia course is just, you know, you hear that this guy's absolutely incredible, has written tons of books, internationally renowned. Um, you just kind of want to hear his philosophies first. I do, I do, and also the, the Central Asian economies are really interesting in the f aspect that they are very dependent on resources, like um, kind of agriculture, but also natural resources and oil, which adds a whole new dimension to an economy that is really, really important to understand for development economics. So, you know, one thing that I've seen when we've had a lot of discussions off camera is how a lot of these issues are a lot more complex than what I could have ever dreamed. Uh, it's easy in our society, especially, where we try to politicize everything and, and we, we essentially oversimplify it so that we can either blame someone or claim to know everything. I, I don't really know why we do this, but 
we oversimplify things and it seems to me like what you're learning is some of the complexity and just just how challenging some of these problems are to, to deal with yeah and it's humbling in a way um, because you know you come into a program like this and you think oh I'm gonna be able to help you know a million farmers get access to improved seed and fertilizer and then you realize people have tried this before and it hasn't worked how am I going to bring something new to the table how am I going to ensure that I understand every facet of what I'm doing, whether it be the lived experience of the people in the country and like what they go through on a daily basis or the, the macroeconomics and what sort of you know, inflation crises or, or financial crises they may be going through, or whether it's the climate of the country and maybe they're trying to grow crops that don't grow well there, or who knows, who knows what the, what the issues are, but there are, are so many things that you have to to keep your eyes open for and to try to comprehend um, in order to come to some sort of understanding of what's going on here and what could I in my future career potentially try to do to improve life yeah. in any, min any number of ways. And that's kind of what, uh, it's been fascinating to me to watch you dig deeper into some of these uh, challenges and you know, uh, applying it back to us, we, we just recently did an episode on the uh, our experience with medical care. Did, I don't know if you got a chance to see that episode or not, Katrill, but we were talking about my heart stent and the costs, and a, a lot of the comments are are simplistic in a sense. I would say they're 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 just they're just saying, oh, your country should do this or your country should do that, um, and. The, the issues that we deal with are very, very complex, and we just want to make a point on that particular episode to say we're just sharing our particular uh, experience and how we're trying to optimize our situation given the, the overall political environment and every other environment in place. In a sense, that's what everybody does, right? I mean, you you got to look at your situation, and you, you, in a sense, you have to ignore the 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 big what would be the great political solution because we, we can't control that a lot of times. Yeah, and I guess there's a difference between um, there's a difference between trying to craft the political and policy environment that you live in and trying to operate within that environment. And regarding your healthcare video, you and mom are optimizing your response to a environment that you cannot change. I am trying to go to school to be the person that can change it. Maybe not healthcare, but your Maybe not healthcare, but maybe agricultural policy. Yeah. And that's a very large responsibility and one that I hope that we as a culture view with a certain amount of nuance and respect for how complex things are and how many people have truly tried even in the united states to make things better even if sometimes it's not visible to us yeah and to that end we welcome your comments uh, in the comment section below katrill will, will in, enjoy reading those comments as will i but i would encourage you not to to put in a oh this politician is evil or that politician's an idiot because that doesn't help anything. We're, we're, we're not going to be able to deal with that anyway. So, And also, no comments about my hair. I like my hair. So y'all can just deal with it. Boy. What's going on? Somebody commented that my hair looks like Elizabeth Warren. Really? Yeah. Uh -oh. I'm only 23. I'm not 75. Yeah. Well, such is the life of a YouTube star like yourself. I'm not a YouTube star anymore. Half these people aren't going to know who I am. <laughs> well, half of them are going to know who you are after this particular episode. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll try to get her cooled down after we get off camera here. You're going to have to send me outside the shed because it's nice and warm in here. <laughs> Again, leave your comments below. Skip the comments on the political rhetoric. We don't, we don't know what to do with it anyway. If we could solve it, we'd solve it. But we know we can't. So, um, 
we just try to stay upbeat and, and make do with what we can. And, and hopefully Catrill can get in a situation where she can have some wise input on some of these major worldwide problems and, and be able to help something. I, it seems to me to be more effective for you to try to dig in and help rather than stand on the sidelines and, and gripe like all the rest of us, right? Well, sometimes it's a little more fun to just stand on the sidelines and gripe. <laughs> I think that's probably what it is. But uh, anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Katrill, thanks for, for, for bringing us up to date. You'll be around here for a, a little more time, so hopefully we can have you in some more episodes. Maybe, if you pay enough. Katrill won't be in any more episodes <laughs> ever. <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time with Tim. Tim.